What's up everybody, Nayland here at Nightech Studio. So today we are going to look at just how to achieve this custom rail look, which is a classic style staircase. So if you're new here, consider subscribing, give this video a thumbs up and let's jump right in. So let's import in our reference image and for that we want to be in the navigation tab let's go here under worksheet and create a new independent worksheet so i'm going to name this as reference image i say okay and we have a space here where we can import in our image so find it wherever you have downloaded it link is in the description below so i have this right here which i want to use and I'm going to bring and position it around this area where we have our hotspot. But I need to first verify whether it's the right scale. So with that, I'll use a line. So let's make it red so you can see it. And I need the horse there to be a meter high. And you can see it's very big. The image is so big, but to change the scale, I'm going to just rescale the image by Ctrl K and I say OK and I will begin from the very beginning here and stretch all the way. I want the whole of this there to be one meter. So all this needs to come down to that and that will be what we will work with. So let's bring this and put it around the hotspot area so to trace i will need to come and get this image right click and show as trace reference and it, it i can't see anything actually you can see just the line that we have on this thing and by the i can delete it because i don't need it and i saw some issues here i think we need to first fix how this thing is so let's come in here just make sure it's vertical because currently i can see it's not so i'm, I'm going to control e rotate and i think that now looks fine all right so i have it used as the trace stress reference for the ground floor but currently we can't see it and if i also delete this reference line you can see that we can't see a thing so we can't see it because by default if we go to the trace reference here let's get the dialog box the figure is by default turned off so when you come here if you go to figure here it's turned off so we need to turn that on and now you can see that it shows across so that's that's all you have to do in order to be able to see our reference image and as well you have options here to choose what you want it to look like maybe you can choose that and tone it down a little so that it doesn't overshadow your work but let's remove this we want to concentrate on this work we'll begin by making this post here so how do we make this post we want this to be about 40 in my opinion and then I need a spline so for this I'm going to make half of this and that is achieved by using just the spline so I'll go ahead and create a basic shape around it and that looks about it you can see that if I mirror this by ctrl shift m uh, it's kind of similar and it will give us that shape so how do we create the shape that we want let me pick this line and use it to close this shape and what we are actually going to use is a morph tool so you click here to on the morph tool choose the material you want to see metal iron for our case and that will be it so space click in order to capture this shape and go ahead and create the with, with this as the axis center of axis first click the first point and the next and you have this revolution angle which is going to be 360 for this case and we have ourselves the first shape so when we select this shape and press f5 to go into 3d let's fit to window you can see we have ourselves this nice beginning or beginning of this post 
which is kind of cool. So we need to build to make our way across the whole post. Next is going to be this rounded thing. And for that, I like to use a beam because it's a horizontal member. And this beam, I'm going to make it rounded like it should be. Uh, but I haven't yet found out how thick it should be. So I'll measure this. It's a, it should be around 15 marks. So I'm going to come here and make this 15. Cool. There you are. And you can definitely dictate how high it's going to be when we come here in positioning. We need to have it at around zero. Yes, maybe I think this will work. So I'll make this come uh, all the way up to there. So we have that. So in order to appreciate this, we may need to create a little section. So let me, let me go to settings and change a few things. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and draw the simple section here. So let's see what that looks like. Open with current view. We have ourselves something going on here. And this is going to be the center. Great. So that's cool. So for the next shape here, it's a bit of a challenge. Uh, we need this all the way up to around 166 and it should be about 15 yeah maximum post thickness for us to achieve that we need to go to the object and all you have to do is type in spiral and you see something cool here which is this object here and that object is going to help us to create that spiraling shape so what we need to check out is under custom and settings we need to find the sweep angle. So the sweep angle is how many times we want it to uh, create this shape. Let me first find out how many these are. This is one, two, three, four. So I'm going to make this a product of four. So what is um, four by uh, 360? It's about 1,004. 440. So I need to have 1440 as the sweep angle. And of course that should sweep across the 166 that like we discovered on the height of the thing. But then we also need to know the radius of that axis. The radius of that axis should be max. We had the maximum of 15. So that means that the inner radius would be around 7 or 7.5. And the radius of the tube should be around five. Let's see what that looks like. So let's see that gives us around 19. That's um, a little too much because we need it to, to, to boil down a bit. So I think I'm going to use five. Yes, 15 will work. And as well, I need before I leave to go back here under rotation axis, I need it 90 because for now we are working on the ground plane on the X axis. So when I place that, you can see, but it is going the wrong way. So we can select it and mirror by control M to have it there. And now we have something exciting going on, but we also need to create another loop that comes through this. So in order to create that, we need to make a copy of this control D. So let's make that copy. You can see that I have created a copy, but this copy now is supposed to overlap onto this one. And in order for it to do that, we need to make this a little longer. Uh, so let's add another sweep. So in order to add another sweep, we need to add another length by which it's going to sweep. So this 166 is not enough. So if I bring back my calculator for this, so the 166 it was giving us four loops. Yeah. So it we all we have to do is to add this to the 166 and we have another loop which is going to be 207.5. So let's just put that in. So once we have that 208, 
we need to add also the 360 on this one, which will give us 1800, I guess, yeah. So that now we have another loop added. So we say, okay, and now you can see that this adds another loop. So we need to overlap. And in order for it to overlap, we don't bring it the way it is. We half of 42 is 21, something like that. And we need to bring this and overlap it here. And now we have something cool going on here. In order to see what we have done, Control A to select everything, F5. This is cool. So if we go to settings, we can definitely change what it's going to look like under surface here. So make sure to choose iron like we decided before. And we have this cool stuff. So we need to go to section and bring it to its position. All right, so the rest here is a repetition, the beam tool and the move tool. So if we go to 3D now, we can see that it's developing well. All we have to do is to get the colors right. So again, we will need the spiral, but we need to measure how much this is. This is supposed to be around 89. So make this 89 and it's supposed to spiral for only 360 degrees and the axis, the angle here, uh, let's uh, put in 20 for now and see where it takes us. We will decide that in section. So of course we need to mirror this and we know that this is supposed to start from around here. So we bring this down to the ground and this is about 40 and it should be halfway through. So I need to know how much this is. This is 66. So I need it to be 20. So I need to reduce this uh, to something like 15 because I need this to be 20. It needs to be half, which is going to be 10. Yeah, that's that should be able to work. Yeah, so we have the 20 and 20 below. And of course, for this one, we may need to reduce how thick it is. Three millimeters will work, in my opinion. And we can right click and convert to morph so that is converted one of these elevations so i'm going to use this this elevation right here and select this morph yeah be sure to to give it the metal iron like i decided to and i need to control u in order to rotate to rotate a distribute around three copies and I need to rotate them to path. I say okay and if using this as the center I can decide yeah that should work yes yeah that's cool so I need to join it to the rest of the body
So there you have it. We have ourselves the railing post. So in order to do the baluster, we want to go to let's bring back this trace reference thing and I will choose this icon here such that I'm able to drag this on the side. So we leave that independent. Let's close it again and we begin to draw over this. So some things are similar so we will pick them for example this base and its handle here. Let's drag a copy by Control D to there. We will spread this all the way to right there and we also have this other now let's do the next form which we are going to do like we saw before with a spline so i'll pick that spline and just be sure to go around making not so many points but as few as you possibly can such that it's going to be easy for us to pick the shape so we will pick this one right here and space click to pick that form and automatically it will be picked although we need to reduce the diameter of that I feel like it was about eight yeah that looks just about it the next form as well we pick the spline go ahead and draw all over around this and to avoid interlocking forms you might need to make a copy of this so we pick this one here and it's what we will use by space clicking this shape and there we have it cool pick our form and bring it back to position right there and we need a copy there ctrl shift m to mirror a copy and ctrl m to mirror it the other way around we bring this to somewhere right there and that looks just about right and we need copies of these in the junction area so i'll go ahead and kind of rotate them to place where they are supposed to be and of course these two up here again cool and we are done with the next shape so let's see what it looks like f5 pretty awesome right so now it's time to realign these things because currently they are in the horizontal position and that may not be helpful for us so let's begin with this one which we finished before f5 to go to 3d so i'll select everything right click and convert into morph selection into morph i say okay and continue anyway we go to settings and i like to unify it by having one uniform uncut line pen so i'll choose like 8.118 pen and of course since it's a morph we have the ability to reorient it by making it stand so we will just open this with current view settings and in here rotate this shape with ctrl e using something like this base there you are so let's see what that looks like pretty cool go to file library is an object then save selection as a railing post right there useful so when i save that we can save this as 01 post and we will save that because that is going to be our post we say okay and we'll do the same for this other one right here we might need this section as well so we transfer it to a new location but before we get there so in order to be sure i'll mark you 
and go to see all of it in 3D, select everything, right click, convert everything into a morph, continue anyway. All right, then I unify it with one pen. So in settings here, uncut pen, I'll choose like 8.18 as we did before. And now that, that looks awesome. Let's rotate it using the section that we created. So select this control E to rotate. And we have that in a vertical position, which is good for us. With it selected, we go to File, Libraries and Objects, Save Selection as, Reading Post as well. And we say OK, but our post is going to be 01 uh, Balusta because we will use it as a Balusta. And that will be it. Say OK and say OK. So now let's create a simple staircase that we are going to use. So we will pick a simple stair here, nothing that we shall change. Let's do the first half, which should be at around 15. I can turn around using a simple landing here. It should turn from around 2.5, yeah, and it should go again like that. Well, obviously, I need to change how it looks like. Although in the settings, I'd like to fix the thread, the thread something here, the thread to be 300. I prefer uh, that because we will use it for our railing. So once I'm sure that is going to happen, yeah, it will reset somehow uh, because now I know that we are going to use that 300. So now we need to create a, a railing on this default stair. So we will go to the railing settings and we go through the most important things that to, we need to change. So let's come here and of course we don't need a handrail. We can remove that one. We don't, we need this top rail to be this option right here. Let's chain link such that uh, on a max, this should be around 80 in my opinion. And I will use a timber material for that. Next, we don't need this rail. We just need this one here and we can choose that it should be a post. Yeah, which it is and it loads inside there. Yeah, you should be able to see what it looks like here in this view display. And for the balusta, we just need one of it, which is going to be at uh, a spacing of 150, remember? And of course, we need to make sure that this is 300, yeah, the 300, because we need one per thread. So this, so once we have that as 100, this one needs to be 150, but then also uh, we need to fix it. So in baluster position and distribution, let's fix it and have it placed at the center of these things. Obviously we need to choose what it should look like in the settings here. Let's create this as a baluster, yeah? And it will load it inside here, which is cool really cool what it looks like there. So the rest is fine. We need to also go to the post here and be sure to choose post because uh, we need also end posts. Yeah, right there. Awesome. So those are the main thing that you need to watch out for. The rest I'm happy just make to make sure it's associative on both sides and Let's put it somewhere, I think. Okay, let's put it somewhere like there. See what happens. All right. First attempt is a little bit weird. We have them placed in different positions. 
Uh, this one looks to be reoriented in a different position, but it's pretty exciting what we have. Well, in order to fix that, we need to come back, get this guy, this morph guy, uh, which is our baluster, control E and rotate it by 90. So be sure to rotate this guy by 90. Yeah. And with it selected, go to file, where is an object, save selection as a railing post, and just be sure to override this baluster thing, yeah? Let's save and replace that one. And we say okay. And that should update. So let's kind of look at what it looks like here. I'll go to 3D to see it. It should reorient. Yeah, that's super cool. And I am already stunned at what is happening here. Although we have some issues, uh, it just starts to become a little bit too much. I need to go to settings and just make sure in the baluster options here, I increase just a little bit here in this, this distance. Let me make it about 155 so we don't have uh, it doubling at some points. Yeah. Yeah. So now it starts to become a little bit more minimal. I hope you can see that that's cleaning it out a bit. But of course we have uh, some issues going on. So it's a matter of tweaking, tweaking, tweaking. For example, we could as well uh, edit this further by uh, going into edit mode. So be sure to click on edit and we have this, for example, selected, right click um, and we say connect solid element operations. So we want to be able to choose that as an operator, those two rails. And then we select these things which are popping through. Uh, I like to, this is kind of not easy to select, but just have to be patient, uh, change your angle of view. All right, I have them selected. Then those will be the targets, yeah. And the operation is going to be subtraction with upward extrusion. I say execute, yeah. So now it should be chopped from extruding and that's, Pretty exciting, huh? Let's do the same for this part right here. Get as operator. This guy right here. Get as target. We upward extrusion and we ex execute. Clean and nice. Get this guy as operator and these little guys as targets. Subtract with upward extrusion. And there we have it. So we can exit the edit mode and we have ourselves a nice and clean staircase. So it may not work out at the very first point, but trust me, just go ahead and, you know, tweak it, tweak it until you get it to look like what you want it to see. So overall, I'm pretty happy with the result. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.